Stuart, could you talk about um, working with people in our life that are not particularly uh, keen on our work, uh, maybe even a little scared of it? Well, it's just literally talking about most people. <laughs> not terribly keen on spiritual practice and it frightens them. Yes, it frightens them. Uh, you know, it's something that you, again, you can't have expectations for them to be any different. They are what they are. You have to get big enough in yourself to be able to deal with them without allowing them to upset you. And once you can arrive at that place in yourself, they literally will stop bothering you. When they finally realize that your commitment to spiritual life is that strong and the work that you're doing is so important in your life, you know, they're going to stop bothering you. It doesn't affect you. It will only bother you if they can put some kind of a, you know, I don't know, some kind of a drill inside you. And, and, you know, and so I look, I've had what you just asked, I've had all my life. And most people are not interested. Most people, they're only interested is kind of making it through the day, money, you know, survival. That's what they're interested in, you know, having some kind of position in the world. And, and they pray somewhere in their heart that somebody's going to come along and love them. as far as spiritual practice and certainly practice the depth of what we practice here, uh, it's not for everybody. And people are gonna be intimidated. They're gonna be threatened by it. Uh, they're gonna be threatened just seeing you change as deeply. You know, they give you all this stuff about idol worship and you know, you're gonna roast in hell and you know, I mean, look, everybody on this planet is roasting in hell right now, you know? I mean, I don't think hell can be any worse than what goes on on the earth, you know? So it's just stuff that has to bounce off you and say, look, my commitment to a spiritual life is stronger and deeper than anything, anybody, anybody's opinion about what it's all about. And most people throw opinions around when they have no idea what they're talking about. None. <clears throat> and the opinions are generally superficial. They have no depth to them. And you got to be bigger than it. I have to be bigger than it. Than what other people think and their opinions and what they think is right or wrong and their conception of religion and spirituality. Uh, could be very different than what we do, but that's all right. I've learned in my life, if something works for somebody, whatever it is, I have to respect it. And that certainly has allowed me to arrive in a place where people's comments don't mean anything to me. And I don't even have to talk to them about it, voice my opinion and tell them it's not, it just bounces off. I just go about doing what I was born here to do. And that's to build myself and nurture people who are interested in learning about this and using it to grow in their life. And the rest of it is bullshit, you know? It really is, and it's sad bullshit too. Because it doesn't promote life. It tries to rip away life from other people. And it's very sad. And one has to be strong enough not to allow that to take over. Not to allow yourself to be uh, hurt by those things that people say. I mean, look. If you do this work in great depth, it opens up a world that's a magical world. There's nothing mediocre about this work. If you turn it into mediocrity, you're doing it a disservice. If you're using it to justify that part of you that doesn't want to grow, but is scared, 
and wants to live like a, a hermit in your apartment, your cave, whatever it is, then you're doing this work in injustice because that's not what it's about. It's about one's own limitation is what one is applying on this work. This work is about inner growth. It's about change. It's about living in a magical world. It's about recognizing that everything that manifests around us is sacred. It's God's world, not our world. We're just a bunch of tourists here. You know, we come, we spend 60 years, 70, 80 years, 20 years, whatever it is, and do our best to just mess up this place. <laughs> And never to create, you know, a connection with spirit and to learn what being born has to teach us about having a spiritual life. <laughs> so I wouldn't let any of that stuff bother you. I would just say, okay, if it bothers me, it's not their fault. I have to get stronger inside. I have to grow in myself. And until it stops bothering you, it's something you have to use as a reminder that you've got to grow inside yourself. And once you get past it, other stuff is going to come. <laughs> it's the nature of the beast. People, you know, look, uh, just to finish, people want to live in a world where you know they they just have some kind of safety and security and they want to hide out from life and as long as that world is part of their world you understand it generates a lot of mediocrity and it generates a lot of stagnation and boredom and it shouldn't be that way life should be you know, literally a miraculous thing. We're born here. We get up in the morning. And there should be projects we have that really are in service of God. Not lip service of God, but real. Our activity, what we do in the world, how we function, how we work inside ourselves, all of it should be in service of a higher energy in the universe. And that is in service of life because life is a manifestation of God. Does anyone else have a question? I just learned it's nobody else's fault. You know, if there are people around me that are difficult and they're very superficial or innocent, and I allow it to bother me, it's not their fault. It's my fault. I have to grow. I have to learn how to build a system inside that's strong enough to where that level of life doesn't bother me. It doesn't interfere with my spiritual growth. So I think that's an important way of looking at all of this. Be wrong. <laughs> Allow yourself to make up the difference. Don't, don't blame other people. It's really not their fault. They just live in their own reality. And if their reality conflicts with any one of our realities, then we have to grow and get strong enough to where we can respect what they talk about and it doesn't bother us. Because frankly, nobody here, nobody anywhere is gonna change this world, you know? We can change ourselves, but the world is God's university. There are all these departments of anger, hostility, rage, unhappiness, opinions. They're all departments in God's university that are there to teach us what we need to do to learn to grow and to transcend them, to get bigger than them.
Does anyone else have a question? I think that's great. I never really said it that way. You know, like all these things like rage and unhappiness. And it's all, you know, departments in God's university. That was great, Stuart. Thank you. I like that a lot. And they're there to teach us. They're not there to get us upset. They're there to teach us grow, schmuck, grow, you know? You know, I'm teaching you something about you. You get upset when somebody near you has a little bit of rage. Bro, don't get upset. It's just another department in my university. Does anyone else have a question? I would like to ask. You have to find some place in my book, my book on cancer that I'm writing to talk about God's university. I mean, it's a very good thing to be in there. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? I just have one announcement. I've been making it. There might not be a class on Sunday. I have to go to a memorial service, and uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to get back here. So if you don't get a you know, the uh, link on Sunday morning. Don't think I've forgotten about you or I left you out. <laughs> it's just something has come up that I have to do. It's important that I do it. And... Okay, if there are no more questions, there will be meditation tomorrow evening. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Yeah.